Greetings to you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and Happy New Year. You all may be thinking why I am wishing the New Year's wishes so early. And uh, the thing is that church has its own calendar. Uh, we follow the liturgical calendar in the church. Uh, probably in uh, most of the contemporary churches and uh, uh, mostly in Gujarati churches, we do not follow the liturgical calendar fully. But the thing is that at there are at least two seasons in the liturgical calendar which we all observe. And the first one is the Advent season and the other one is the Lent season, right? And we follow these two seasons at least. Uh, the Advent season has its own importance in the church. Uh, it begins uh, at least four Sundays prior to the Christmas day. And so the today is Advent and that is why this is the new year of the church. The Advent season uh, that denotes the beginning of the new year of the liturgical calendar in the church. And the first Sunday of Advent is the new year for the church, right? And so today is the new year. And so again, happy new year. May this liturgical calendar, the Advent season, be blessed for each one of us uh, in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And so when we uh, uh, begin to celebrate the Advent season, mostly in today, in the contemporary uh, church atmosphere, we think that uh, the Advent season is for the uh, preparation of the Christmas. And so we start preparing ourselves for the Christmas and we uh, buy new clothes and think and plan about the decorations and other programs and all those things in the church. We uh, arrange different Christmas programs, the cultural programs in our churches in order to uh, celebrate the Christmas, in order to have that fever of Christmas in our churches, in our societies. And that is what we think about the Advent season. But actually, if we look into the history, the Advent season was never intended for this kind of purposes. It has its, it, it, it has, it, it, it had it, its own purposes, right? And so uh, that is what we are going to look at this evening and throughout this Advent season. The purpose and meaning of uh, the Advent season, and, the, and that is the theme of today's uh, meditation. If we think about the uh, word Advent itself, it has the uh, very significant meaning. It comes from the Greek word parousia. And the parousia is used for the first coming of Jesus Christ as, a, uh, as the incarnation uh, in the uh, stable as we see in the gospel records. And it, it is also used for the second coming of Jesus Christ when he is going to come again to take uh, his church, the bride, as the, uh, as, the, uh, as the bridegroom, right? And that is the meaning of this uh, Greek word parousia. And from this Greek word, we have the Latin word that is adventus. And from this adventus word, we have got the English word advent. This means arrival or coming. This was actually used in, used in history uh, uh, in order to notify the uh, people that the king is arriving. Before the arrival of the king, he will send his messenger uh, to inform the citizens that the king is arriving. And that was, this, uh, the, that was the meaning and that was the image behind this word. And so when we are thinking about this advent uh, by, uh, with using the capital A, it, it signifies that the, the king of kings, the lord of lord, Jesus Christ is arriving and it signifies its arrival, his arrival. And when he is arriving, this season is meant for us to be prepared for his arrival. If we are not prepared for his arrival, then the celebration of Christmas is, is, is vain for us, right? And so that is what the uh, significance of this word is. Now, in history, if we look at the beginning of this uh, Advent season, uh, we have uh, different uh, 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 different opinions and different thoughts behind the uh, origin of this Advent season. But the oldest record that we find in the history is in the uh, in in AD 380. There was a priest. Uh, in fact, he was uh, appointed as the bishop later, and his name is a uh, uh, Priscillian. He uh, was the bishop, and he. Uh, he had his own theology, he, his own uh, interpretation of the scripture and he was accused uh, by the church leaders then that his theology, his teachings are very much aligned or very much influenced by the Gnosticism. And so 
he his teachings were uh, uh, declared as heresy the, the his teachings were not accepted in the church he was later even sentenced to death for his teaching uh, which was considered as heresy and now what was his teaching and why his teaching was uh, considered as heresy gnosticism from which his teaching was influenced considers that everything every material thing every visible thing that we have in this world is evil and so god cannot uh, cannot take any any form that is evil and human form human flesh the human body is evil and so god can never have this human body that was the teaching that he had and gnosticism says that knowledge is above everything Ginosko is the Greek word in, uh, uh, it is even used in the Bible New Testament as well. And then uh, from that, the Gnosticism, that, that, uh, that thought, that philosophy comes from. And that is why Priscillian and his teaching, which is known as the Priscillianism, it was banned in the church. It was prohibited in the church and he was sentenced to death. But then it was in response to this heresy that the advent season began that is what we have as the earliest record in the history there are different uh, uh, opinions and different debates about those uh, this uh, uh, this beginning of the advent season we are not going to go into uh, those things but the thing is that uh, the advent season says that we need to be prepared for the coming of messiah he is going to come again the bible says that he came first in human flesh as a child in the manger he died bodily he was buried bodily and he was resurrected in body it was not a soul that came out from the grave it was he himself in his body that he came out and that is what we believe bodily resurrection of jesus christ and we again believe that at the arrival of messiah second time even we are going to be resurrected bodily and he is going to come in body it's not a spirit that is going to come it's not the spirit of jesus christ that will arrive second time and that is what we believe from the bible but the gnosticism and even the uh, heresy of priscillian uh, those teachings that did not believe the bodily arrival of jesus christ at the first in the manger bodily resurrection of jesus christ uh, from the grave and bodily arrival second arrival of jesus christ uh, uh, as the king of kings and the lord of lords they do not be they did not believe that they thought that it was some kind of illusion or some kind of uh, allegorical interpretation of the scripture and that is why it was considered as the heresy and that is why as the as the counterfeit of the uh, that the teaching or that heresy that we have this advent season this advent season uh, where the uh, first few days from the first sunday of advent till the 16th of december the season is meant uh, to uh, to think about the second coming of the messiah when he is coming again which he has promised in the new testament and so till 16th of december we prepare ourselves for the second coming of jesus christ we uh, we uh, focus ourselves uh, on the second coming and from 17th of december till the 24th december we focus on the first coming of messiah the first arrival uh, that is uh, uh, jesus as the child in the manger now the thing is that from this first coming we take the example from the life of jesus christ how to live a, a, a life that is pleasing to god the life that is acceptable to god from his first arrival from his life we learn how to love god and how to love our neighbor how to submit ourselves to jesus christ and from his second uh, from the uh, mention of his second coming we prepare ourselves taking example from his first coming and that is what the advent season uh, in a very short form right and now uh, for this advent uh, series 
uh, I have taken the theme from Philippians chapter 3 verse 20 and from based on this theme we are going to uh, meditate from the word of God throughout this Advent season. Uh, Philippians chapter 3 verse 20 and it says that but our citizenship is in heaven and it is from there that we are expecting a savior the Lord Jesus Christ. Our citizenship is in heaven. We do not belong to this world. And from that, there, from heaven, we are expecting Jesus Christ, the Savior, to come. And that is the meaning and purpose of this Advent season. To prepare ourselves for the advent of Jesus Christ. But before saying these things, uh, Paul warns the Philippian church uh, from above few verses, from uh, verse 17 onwards. And that is what we are. The, that is what we are going to look at. Uh, the Paul is addressing several challenges that the church is facing there. And even today, we are facing those, those challenges, and we need to be aware of the of these uh, uh, issues or this this evil that we found in the church. We find in our churches. Uh, from verse seventeen onwards, he says, "Brothers and sisters, join imitating me." And observe those who live according to the example we have in us. He, uh, he, he is encouraging the church to imitate himself. And not only himself, but those who are living up to the example, up to the mark. Imitate those people. Why imitating Paul? And here, in the same letter, Paul says in chapter 1 verse 21, it's a very famous verse and we all know it uh, uh, by heart. It says, he says that in Philippians chapter 1 verse 21, For to me, living is Christ and dying is gain. For to me, living is Christ and dying is gain. This is the life that I am living. This is the example that I am giving to you. And imitate me in these things. How to live for Christ how to die for Christ, how to surrender yourself completely to the Lord. And in those things, imitate me so that you as a church will be able to glorify God. So that you as the church will be able to fulfill the task that Jesus Christ has given unto you as the church to preach the gospel, to preach the light unto the world. Imitate me in those things. Imitate those people who are living out this example of Jesus Christ. And then he says in verse 18, why to imitate me? Why to imitate me in following Jesus Christ? Because, uh, verse 18 onwards, for many lives, uh, for many live as enemy of the cross of Jesus Christ. There are many people, not in the world, but within the church who are living as the enemy of the cross. They are trying to destroy the cross. They are trying to keep the cross aside and focus uh, themselves, project themselves as the main heroes of the church. What are they doing? See, they are the enemies of the Christ. I have often, I, I have often told you of them and now I will, I tell you even with tears what he is saying in verse 19. Their end is destruction. That is the first thing. Those people who are the enemies of Jesus Christ, their end is destruction. They do not have any other hope left. They are moving towards destruction. They are going to end. They do not have their citizenship in heaven. They do not have any hope left. Because they have changed their focus. They are not imitating Christ. They are going to be destroyed. And when their, 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 their destination is destruction, they do not need to prepare themselves, themselves for the arrival of Messiah. They do, not, they, they do not look for the arrival of Messiah. Now again he says, further he says there in verse 19, their God is the belly. Their God is not Yahweh. Their God is their bellies. That means that they are living to satisfy themselves. Their selfish desires. 
they are living to 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 satisfy their egos their desires their motives their purpose not the purpose of god everything that they do in the church is for themselves and that is why their end is destruction being in the church they are not thinking about glorifying god keeping christ as the center of the church but putting themselves as the center of the church trying to gather as much money as they can trying trying to gain as much power in the church as they can anyhow by hook or crook they are living for their belly their their belly their stomach is their god and to satisfy their bellies their stomach is their ultimate purpose not to glorify god is, uh, is their purpose and that is why their end is in destruction then further he says and their glory in their shame there are things that are that, that are shameful for the christian believer there are things that should not be found in the life of any believer probably those fellowships those desires those addictions many things there are things that are that that are shameful for a christian person but these people they are boasting in those shameful things there is very good example in first uh, corinthians chapter 5 first corinthians chapter 5 and here paul is talking about the same thing if you read verse 1 on onwards it says that it is actually reported that there is sexual immor- immorality among you and of a kind that is not found even among pagans for a man is living with his father's wife and you are arrogant what a shameful thing he says this is something that should not be found even among uh, 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 that should not be found within the church this is something that you should feel shame about being as believers you are living this kind of life but you are boasting in those things in those shameful things you are feeling proud and let me tell you my brothers and sisters it is not shame for themselves it is shame in the uh, for the name of jesus christ because these people are known as the followers of jesus when we as uh, as christians are living such shameful life when we have this kind of relationships when we have this kind of addictions with with this kind of fellowships this kind of selfish desire uh, then people is look uh, people are looking at us as christians and they feel they think that this is what christian life is even today if you ask any uh, any person who is not christian what is christianity how christians live they will have a very different perspective of, uh, about us about the church why because we are boasting in shame and that is why such people have their destination in destruction god jesus do not accept this kind of lives and paul is warning this kind of uh, things uh, in the church and then again he says Uh, the last part of verse verse 19 their minds are set on earthly things they have set themselves their minds their hearts in earthly things in material things to gain as much as they can not for heavenly things but for earthly things in gospel of john chapter 14 verse 1 on onwards jesus is teaching that his disciple he is saying that i am going to prepare the place for you and when i prepare the place for you i'll come back again and i will take you to the place where i live that is the purpose that we have as christians and that is why paul in verse 20 says here after warning the church for this kind of evil in the church he says that remember that our citizenship is in heaven not in earth we belong to somewhere else and that is why he says 
that it is from there that we are expecting a savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. We are expecting a savior. We are waiting for the Lord Jesus Christ. He is going to come. His arrival is very close. That is Advent. That is the meaning and purpose of this season, Advent season. That is, this is what to uh, think about that when season not about parties not about decorations not about celebrating christmas in worldly things that is the secularized version that we have of this advent season this was never the purpose of this season the purpose was to fast to pray to look unto the lord to meditate upon the word of god and then at, uh, 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 and then looking into our hearts what are those things that are hindering me in my relationship with god what are those walls between me and god what are those things that will not allow me to enter into the kingdom of god and then taking out those things throwing them away and expect accept, accepting Jesus as our Lord and Savior to grow more in Christ, to go closer to God, to prepare ourselves even more for the arrival of the Messiah. In the Gospel of Matthew, we, say, we, we find several parables spoken by Jesus. Uh, parable of ten virgin is there. Par parable of the wedding feast is there. Those are the, uh, you can say, those are the, uh, uh, the challenges that we have. Those are the warnings that we have to be prepared for the arrival of Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. If we are not prepared, then we are not going to inherit the kingdom of heaven. We will never have any part in his kingdom. And that is why the Advent season is to prepare ourselves for the advent of Messiah. To prepare ourselves in such a way that when he comes, we will have the part and fellowship in his kingdom on his table. Our celebrations will be there in heaven, not here on earth. Our joy will be there in heaven, not on earth. This doesn't mean that we shouldn't celebrate on earth. Celebrations are there. Joy is there. Because we have the hope of the Messiah. We have the salvation in Messiah. And so we celebrate Christmas. So we celebrate the Advent seasons in different ways. Celebrations are there. But among those celebrations, we shouldn't forget that the King is coming and we need to prepare ourselves. Those celebrations should add in our preparation for the arrival of Messiah. But if we are forgetting the arrival of Messiah uh, in the light of all these celebrations, then we should stop those celebrations. Anything that hinders our relationship with Christ, we should leave it aside. And so I wish that this advent prepare us for the arrival of Messiah. We will sit aside and pray and fast and look into the words of, uh, from the Bible so that we will be prepared when he comes. So that we will be, so that it will be a, an occasion of joy when he comes. Not the occasion or not the moment of so, sorrow and crying. Because if we are not prepared and he comes, we will be, like, uh, we will be crying like those ten virgin, uh, five, virgin, five, five foolish virgins that we find in Gospel of Matthew chapter 25. Let's prepare ourselves for the arrival of Messiah during these advent seasons let us look uh, uh, let us pray and look to the lord in prayer father we thank you for your first advent because in your advent in your coming as the baby of in the manger we find a hope for ourselves the hope of the eternal life with you in heaven it is in your first advent that we have found our citizenship in heaven. We thank you for that. Father, we pray 
that help us to prepare ourselves during this Advent season for the second Advent, for your second arrival, so that when you arrive, when you come, it will, it, it, it will be a moment of joy for us, a moment of celebration for us. And we will have the eternal life with you. Help us to prepare ourselves in such a way that this, this Christmas would be a blessing for each one of us. In the most gracious name of our Lord and Savior, Savior Jesus Christ, we ask and we pray. Amen.